I'm Candace. And I'm Ripley. And I'm John. And this is Com Explaining. The show where we're banned in Egypt, Saudi Arabia, and probably China. Speak for yourself. <laughs> You're also You're banned. You're equally as gay as we are. No! I'm sorry, you've been banned from China. Probably. Probably. <laughs> Please stop. This is quite enough. This is bad. What the fuck am I listening to? A tornado siren winding <laughs> down? Do you want to? For y'all Midwesterners out there. Do you want to hear a tornado I siren? I don't. I really I don't. don't right now. I don't. Because I could make it happen. Wait, this I is would an audio really medium. Prefer, it needs this is to a sound terrible good. terrible thing that you would do. So I found out. I found out that um, tornado sirens—they don't actually just have them everywhere. And I just kind of thought that was just a thing that everyone had tornado sirens, but they don't. Oh, I knew that actually. That's just the Midwest. Everyone has tornadoes. It's weird. I'm not used to the idea. Yeah. Well, we're not really all that used to having tornadoes. Yeah, we don't really get tornadoes. We get some tornadoes sometimes. I've been in Alabama when they had a tornado and. It's nothing like how we react to them. Yeah. Well, yeah, it's all the flying alligators. It's the problem. <laughs> oh, no, doesn't have flying alligators. That's Florida. Florida has flying alligators. Oh, I'm sorry. I know that alligators are strict to um, state lines. They're strict Floridians by law. Anyway. Anyway. Can you guys cooperatively tell me what happened last time? Oh, so, Jesus God. Um, uh, so there were the Inhumans. Yeah, that's where we ended the story. The Inhumans, Black Bolt's here. Black yes. Agar Boltagon. Yes, we've Black Agar, Agar Boltatron. That's me. Hey. Hey, his what? name sounds like a... Hey, hey he's, he's a Transformer. What do you want? He sounds like he's... Uh, well, let's be real. He's not one of the Autobots. That's for damn sure. Well, let's see. Um, I, I remember the last issue because um, Loki was up to some bullshit. As they frequently are. Yeah. And so they'd gone to their lair and they were going to... Because um, all the Asgardians had their powers taken away by Odin. Not all of them, just the ones on Earth. Right. The four of them. Which ones were those? That was Baldur, Sif, Loki, and Thor. Because Loki um, ran out to get them and... <laughs> yeah, shit just didn't go well. <laughs> um, and then even after... Odin had taken everyone else's powers away. Loki was like, I'll go and cause problems. And then dad was not fucking happy and also took Loki's powers and everyone else's powers. No one gets powers. Um, yep. Thor already didn't have powers. But so he went and talked Double to the, uh, was it the Norn Queen? Yes. Okay, I just wasn't sure about her title. I knew who she was. but So he went to... See the Norn Queen, and the Norn Queen was like, "Whatever, whoever's wearing Loki's fucking hat gets powers." <laughs> but that's when the Wrecker burst in through the window, Kool Aid Man, and put on Loki's hat after like punching Loki out because Loki's just a dude now. Yes, you remember this way better than I do. I, I want you to know that I do not remember that. I remember, uh, let's see, Black Bolt became king. <laughs> He didn't start out that way, but he becomes No, baby. he started out as a baby, shocking. <laughs> yes. Most people do. We start, even Black Bolt. Mm-hmm. Once, once upon a time, a baby. Fun fact. Yes. Yes, a baby. And they started with Good the, for his mother, frankly. Uh, they were they were testing the Terrigen mist. Yeah. They well, weren't sure if it would work. Let's save this for our recap before <laughs> we do our great Inhumans segment. Yeah, because it keeps going. Oh god, are we going to have more Inhumans? Yes. Are you telling me that they replaced Tales of Asgard with the Inhumans? Yes. The origins of the Inhumans. What? Maybe we'll finally get Jean Grey's backstory somewhere in here. <laughs> <laughs> you know, officially. Okay, hey, it was promised. It was promised. It'll you come. In a while. <laughs> and so you're, you know, it'll be exactly where you'd expect. In the middle of Mighty Thor. Who fucking knows? I mean, hey, uh, the death of Warren's dad. It'll be a sea story in the back of... Hey, the death of Warren's dad was <laughs> stuffed into a reprint of fucking... Kazar. Kazar. 
a Kazar reprint from two different sources. So come on. <laughs> it, would it be any weirder to find Jean Grey's backstory in the Mighty Thor? I mean, not considering that we're talking about the Inhumans now. But anyway, let's talk about Thor and save so, our bitching about the Inhumans yes. for later. So the record got powers. What happened after that? Uh, I don't remember anything after that. <laughs> John? There was a fight scene. I don't really remember the record, so... Okay. <laughs> well, what happened after that was that Thor, Sif, and Balder saw the record on TV and decided to go do something about it, but Thor, instead of sneaking up, announced that he was going to go fight the record while he was behind the wrecker. <laughs> and the wrecker banished Balder and Sif back to Asgard, where right. Odin said that he wasn't going to do anything. Okay, yeah, I do remember that now. Okay. So let's start reading Thor number 149 from November of 1967. Written by Stan Lee, penciled by Jack Kirby, inked by Vince Coletta, and lettered by Sam Rosen. Thor Boom. is... No, I'm sorry, it's Thpoom. 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 <laughs> Thpoom. <laughs> the nice natural sound. Yeah. Thor is stuck on Earth with no power besides his godly strength, exiled for disobeying his father. Thanks to Loki completely bungling their evil plot, the Wrecker <laughs> had been given magical powers by the Norn Queen and now is facing Thor, who is on his own after his friends were sent back to Asgard, as we just covered. So, so the Wrecker is a recurring yeah. concern, yes? yes? Yes. Oh, actually, I remember one more thing. Um, what? The Wrecker doesn't have Wrecker powers yet, as we're so, as we'll become accustomed to seeing them. The Wrecker is just fucking magic. Yeah, the Wrecker is just magic right now. That's the Wrecker is gloating more than fighting, posturing about how Loki gave him powers and Thor has none. What is this angle? <laughs> Not sure how he knows this, but I guess it doesn't matter it's because magic. he's right. He knows it by magic. He he knows by magic that Thor doesn't have powers? Yes. Okay. He can feel his lack of powers. Alright. Uh, the Wrecker starts laughing over the situation, which Thor doesn't take very well. He can take being at a disadvantage, but he hates being disrespected. Uh, look at how he- That seems properly ha! godly. Ha! <laughs> With two W's. He takes a mighty swing and hurls his hammer, proclaiming that even though the enchantments are gone, it still has power enough to take down this chump. For the Asgard and honor! The hammer hits the wrecker square in the stomach, taking the hot air right out of him. Thor moves to retrieve the inert hammer, already showing signs of exertion, which the wrecker notes before launching an attack. Wrecker beats Thor down before declaring that he's going to use his powers to become fabulously wealthy. At least he didn't immediately decide to go take over the world like some other villains we could what, mention. What is this? Ex <laughs> is every picture of the Wrecker's face this bad? Yes. I think his face just looks like That's that. That's just how he looks. I'm so sorry for everyone who has to look at him. Including us. Especially us. What the fuck's going on with Sif's face if we're talking about faces? <sighs> Sif and Balder, now safely ensconced on Asgard, observe this scene in a crystal ball. They watch in horror, knowing that without all of his powers, Thor can't stand up to a Loki-empowered Wrecker. Well, technically, it's not a Te Loki-empowered Wrecker. Technically, Norn Queen empowered, but for this... In the story, they're saying that Loki gave him the powers, so I guess... It's very rude well, to blame I mean, Loki for to this To be one. fair, they don't know, right? <laughs> yeah. They are just assuming because that's what they do about Loki. Indeed. Yes, uh, yes. That's kind of the whole thing about Loki. Sif decides that she's going to go plead with Odin again. Consequences be damned. And Balder quickly decides to join her. However, once they're gone, Loki appears in the room where they just were, monologuing his intent to destroy the viewing crystal before Odin has a chance to see what's going on. Oh. Uh, why would that, I mean, is that Odin's only way? Because we've seen about, like, 50 big screen crystal um, TVs or whatever in this fucking joint. Loki seems to think that it'll do something. So, I oh, don't know. Okay, Loki, if you say so. <laughs> I guess so. And Loki has the giant ball overhead. They grab the crystal ball and sprint off to the forest of the Norns, cackling the entire way. Why? Wait, why is Loki calling Thor his stepbrother? They do that. I'm sure I've complained about it before, but I doubt you remember. But in the old comics, they do call each other stepbrothers. And it always bothered me because that's not what a stepbrother is. Odin will also call Loki his stepson. And it's like... What? 
That well, doesn't make sense. Well, this single father, I guess, maybe married Loki's dad. I don't fucking know. <laughs> Loki has a mom, too. Oh boy, you know, it could either way. Yeah. Okay. That's just the one I fucking know about. I mean, one. I'm not going to say Odin is above that. I'm also not going to say Odin is above turning into a woman and seducing people. <laughs> Does How often has this happened? I mean, never in the comics. Ah. God. So maybe this Odin is above that. Odin, True. the fuck father. Yes, he is. Very much. <laughs> Back on Earth, the Wrecker is using the secret to manifest his dreams by robbing a bank. Oh my god, that's so <laughs> massively uncreative. It seems suitable, but what the fuck? I know, right? The, he, seriously, this is what he uses his magic powers for. Bank that's robbing. what I'm saying, man. He's a going concern later on, so I guess he got a taste for it. If I'm the strongest one in the world, I also well, have to be the richest. Well, before he got powers, he was just a petty thief. So. Yeah. Two now he's living the high life, he's not robbing exactly. banks. He's not exactly. even a creative thief. No. Two guards approach with guns drawn, proclaiming that there's a police squad on the way to back them up. However, given that the record was holding off the cops without breaking a sweat just last issue, I don't have a lot of confidence that this will deter him. And it doesn't, for even a second. He uses his crowbar to tear the floor out from under them right before the cops arrive and immediately open fire. That's the wreck, so that's the record. Doesn't look like much to me. They demand he disarm and surrender, which seems backwards to me, but whatever. <laughs> the wrecker, true to his name, uses his crowbar to crash through a wall. Uh-huh. During the course of his blasting, he claims that the crowbar has been enchanted somehow, somehow but I don't remember that ever happening. That was not a thing. Thor approaches, bruised and wobbly need, but still insists that the cops stand back while he deals with this. He rushes the wrecker, catching him off guard and reiterating his oath to protect mankind. Oh, I hate this. What is what, what is this, this angle? Bad. It's bad. <laughs> I don't know. That doesn't no. That looks that doesn't that doesn't look healthy. No. Uh, I, hey, that's how Hey, wrecker, that kills people. Well, I don't think he cares particularly. No, he doesn't. Wrecker brushes him off pretty quickly and begins advancing. Thor hops on top of a nearby pickup truck. Which, the wrecker, somewhere early smashes. I'm shocked. Wrecks. However, when the dust clears, Thor is nowhere to be seen. Until he swoops down from, uh, somewhere Ooh. and grabs the wrecker's crowbar between his feet, pulling what? it out of his hands before retreating back to some kind of scaffolding. What? I don't know where this construction zone came from. What? It seems very sudden. Maybe they're renovating the bank or something. I mean, there's I'm scaffolding and shit all over New York City. I'm Friday. still the Joker with the enchanted power. Then why did you need the fucking crowbar? <laughs> what? This guy. The this guy is so... Dumb? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Him and fucking Carl should team up. <laughs> no, no, Carl's actually more clever than he, this one. A little bit, yeah. <laughs> Mildly. Mildly. Which is sad. Uh, Thor, you've had better enemies, and one of them was Carl. So later on, the Wrecker gets this whole crew called the, the wrecking, wrecking Crew. crew. I've heard of them. Full of guys who all have very similar powers, but he's actually the smartest of them. Oh, no. <laughs> so. Oh, no, that's sad. That's, <laughs> that's so excellent, sad. though. It's excellent. Yeah. It's so good. Meanwhile, on Asgard, Sif and Balder are begging Odin to do something, insisting that Thor is facing mortal danger. Odin says that even without his power, there is no one who can challenge Thor, which I think reveals something interesting about the way his brain works. Yeah. Uh, also, has he been wearing that hat this whole time? No, he changes it. Every, every, time. every single time you see he's him, he still, wears a different hat. He, he's still doing it. He's, yes. Yes. God, I... He's going to he's going to continue doing that until the modern age. Fuck. I swear to God. <laughs> Odin insists that he only wants to punish Thor, not kill him, and Baldur asks him to go see for himself the threat that Thor faces. The three of them trek back to the room with the viewing crystal, only to find it missing, as we saw earlier. Baldur and Sif immediately come to the correct conclusion that Loki took it. Why don't you just ask Heimdall what's going on? Also, don't you That's have, what I was wondering as I was reading this. Don't you have other crystals? They have other crystals. They, do. they also have Heimdall who literally sees and hears everything everywhere. Baldur turns to Odin 
begging permission to track down Loki in the Norn Forest. I don't know how he knows that's where Loki is, but he knows, so whatever. Odin asks if he's sure about that, because he poses no threat to the powerful Norn Queen. Baldur insists that he would risk death for the sake of his friend, and Sif concurs. Thor is now hanging from the bucket of a digging machine, even though it looked like he was on scaffolding before. No, I, I kind of saw it, actually. Did you? Yeah, because the way it was shaped, look at the shape of what he's hanging yeah, from. Yeah, actually, yeah. That's a I very guess. old school uh, digging equipment. I guess so. Whatever. <laughs> they are in the middle of some kind of construction site. Still don't know how we got here. We were just in a bank, but okay. Sure. You may ask yourself, how did I get here? Wrecker lifts the digger and flips it over, throwing Thor off his perch. He then retrieves his crowbar. Thor rises slowly, only to face off the Wrecker, now driving a bulldozer for some reason. That's actually kind of impressive for the man. Those do take some skill. He's, he's um, forklift certified and just kind of <laughs> took it from there. <laughs> he's forklift certified, but the work didn't pay enough. <laughs> that Turned actually... to a life of crime. That covers a joke that I was going to do <laughs> So thanks for taking that away from me. But, um, I was going to say. A funny joke. I was going to. Well, it comes up later. Oh, no. <laughs> but I was. I'm just going to say it when I get to it. All right. Screw you guys. <laughs> I wrote the joke. I'm going to say it. I promise. I didn't see it. Wrecker uses the bulldozer to push Thor against a wall and crush him, demanding that he surrender before the final blow. Thor cries out in defiance and, with all his might, pushes the bulldozer Takes away. A massive shit. <laughs> yep. <laughs> he surges forward and starts wailing on the Wrecker, but the Wrecker's hand finds his crowbar once more and is able to chase Thor away. For some reason, Thor starts scrambling up the side of the building now. <laughs> Spider do. Thor! Spider Thor! But predictably, the Wrecker just takes the whole thing down from the foundations. As he oh, does. That's at, this point, at this point, I'm wondering, why is he a thief when he clearly has a passion for demolition? You know, damage control could do good work with this guy. Right? Maybe they don't exist yet and... The man just wants a job opportunity. This is our take on the wrecker. Yeah. He needs, a, just give him a good job. He that, could be a blue collar hero if it paid enough. He but could. it doesn't. Crime <laughs> pays better. So let's take one last look at Thor's friends. Even as they're riding out to the forest of the Norns, Baldur is trying to convince Sif to stay behind because Stan just can't resist belittling the one woman in this book. Why does she have blonde hair now? It's or just, is this a part of her helmet? It's just a plume that's part of her helmet. Okay. It's bad. I don't, yeah. Baldur then says something ominous about losing your soul to the Norns before we leave them yet again. The Wrecker searches the rubble of the building. He's sure he saw Thor fall, but wants to confirm it with his own eyes. And he swiftly does, uncovering the battered and broken body of the Thunder God, seemingly unmoving amid the wreckage. He won't fight anyone ever again. The origin of the Inhumans. Silence All or right. death! So, what happened in the Inhumans? <laughs> Tell me. Okay, so, um, well, there were cavemen, there and they were, were fighting, like, I don't know, war mammoths or something. So they fought the war mammoths, but really there was this robot guy who wasn't a robot guy who watched the war mammoths, and he just went back to Adelan, where they were like, the king was like, we're gonna test out these funky crystals and see what happens. So he did, and then he became an inhuman, and then this robot from the Cree, actual robot this time, mm -hmm. walked over the water, Jesus style, to uh, Adelan. Mm -hmm. And so he was like, okay, that's pretty cool. Good job, guys. And then he left. And then Baby Black Bolt Baby was Black born. Black Bolt. Blackguard Bolt. <laughs> Gone. Yep, you nailed it. You got it that time. My favorite shape, the Bolt of God. <laughs> <laughs> How many sides does that have? Why? <laughs> However many's left after that happens. Solve for why. <laughs> um, so he was just, he can't do anything. He's so awesome. He can't do anything, but that's grown up Black Bolt because I forgot that Baby Black Bolt was actually a flashback. Mm -hmm. And so Baby Black Bolt's parents were studying his genes because he, the Inhumans are weird eugenicists. Yes, they are just weird, creepy eugenicists. Yep. Baby Black Bolt could float and they're like, well, that's cool, but that's not going to be like his power forever when he 
is of non-baby yes, age. Yes, because you go baby through genius like power style. stages. You uh, suddenly have it goes away power. in puberty. But um, so he uh was upset that his dad was looking to like fucking inject him with a needle or something. He only and had a fucking gun. That's right. He had a gun. It wasn't a needle. He had a fucking gun, and he was gonna <laughs> shoot the baby. And so baby Black Bolt fucking whined <laughs> and blew up the lab. His parents survived, and he also survived because he was, I don't know, baby, a force field. baby force field things, which I don't think was what was mentioned that he did before, but okay. That's fine. Anyway, here we are. Looking at Black Bolt. Um, we're looking at Black Bolt. Black Bolt, ass towards the camera. No ass. <laughs> no Absolutely ass flat. This, so man is, <laughs> this man is minus an ass. Flat as a fucking pancake. <laughs> Which is impressive. He's got beefcake shoulders, but no ass. Skipped leg day. He, he skipped ass day. I didn't know you could skip ass day. Well, you need to work out your glutes. So I guess that Black Bolt's dad is talking to him on the phone. Well... Yeah, talking to him because he can't really hold much of a conversation yeah, back. Great conversation we're having. Son. Why does a black bolt just do sign language? You know, great question. Actually, you, you'd think the king of uh, is, is he the king? or like fucking type you, do something. You'd think that if he I, did, I guess the, he can't be the fucking. The, I guess he can't be the fucking uh, king yet. The royal family of Adelan would have sign language. Okay, wait. I didn't know that Aegon, I'm looking at this, says, Black Bolt, son of Aegon, hereditary ruler of all the Inhumans, and we didn't cover that! No. That didn't happen until now. Anyway, I guess King Black Bolt's dad (laughs) (laughs) is like, well, you've been living in this fucking sound soundproof room for like 19 years of your life but now I think I can trust you enough to not fucking talk so you can come out yes yes I'm sure that'll work fine and he's apparently quite excited and so the family comes out to see him and um apparently Medusa is Black Bolt's cousin which I did not know oh no they're that kind of royals (laughs) yeah and that makes sense. That fits their bunch of royalty. cousin fuckers. And they were cousins. Oh, God. No. Um, so they brought him this cool box that, I don't know, does something. Not entirely clear. Wow, Crystal is really fucking small. I thought that Crystal was not that much younger, but... She's cute. Hey. She's adorable. She's a tiny little baby. Hey, Medusa. She's just a little girl. I-, I realized that Johnny Storm was probably a downgrade. At least he wasn't your cousin. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so everybody everybody in the fucking family is here to see Black Bolt. Okay. That's his evil brother who is not Loki, but looks a, a lot and like Loki. Who has Loki like Loki and, and has Loki color scheme. And has, yeah. and has Loki's I fr- younger I fr- sibling complex. I think it's fucking name oh there maximus. it is it's right there maximus, maximus. Yeah. oh yeah uh, he's Actually, like well yeah. i'm gonna fucking tase you and prove that you can't fucking you don't have the chops to make it you just i'm gonna tase you and you're gonna fucking yell i mean it's more like a gun but no, like whatever Uncle he does maximus, don't well he shoots black bolt and black bolt just flies away from the beam to prove that he can be king and so Maximus, I don't know, is still, like, holding fucking Crystal for some reason. Terrifying face, by the way. (laughs) Absolutely (laughs) horrific. Really bad. Why? This is, like, looking at a fucking Chucky doll. (laughs) He has the same gross, greasy hair as Loki, too. (laughs) It's the grease gene. It makes you evil. The evil grease gene. Ah, Medusa's hair. The evil grease gene that only affects younger siblings. Well, Medusa uses her hair to save her little sister from whatever the fuck Maximus is up to here. And no one mourns Medusa of the mystic hair. Oh my god. <laughs> but I, I gotta I gotta wonder, hey, hey Maximus, were you trying to get Black Bolt to murder you? No, I think he just wanted to kill Black Bolt. No, he just wants to kill Black Bolt. But it didn't kill Black Bolt, and Black Bolt could have killed him. Uh, so Gorgon stomped his horse feet. And knocked him over to Karnak, who uh, does something. Throws him in circles in the air and then throws him on the ground 
And now Black Bolt is back, and Uncle Black Bolt is sad because he realizes he's going to have to remain silent for the rest of his fucking life. Next, Triton and the humans! That was all really weird. Yeah. <laughs> uh, wasn't, didn't appreciate the revelation that the Inhumans are cousin fuckers. <laughs> <laughs> God, that's the worst. I, they have buried that for a long time. Yeah, why hasn't this come to light? I love this Loki face on this cover. <laughs> oh, God. Uh, I was sitting here just looking at how fine Hella looked. Yeah, she always yeah, looks great. Yeah, I was kind of looking at that, and I didn't realize that was supposed to be Loki. That is Loki. Uh, that looks like it's supposed to be the devil. See, I would have just figured it was Odin hanging out with a new hat. Because he likes to do that, just hang out he in the sky. He does. He does like to lurk on people. So what we got. With a hat. So we have here Thor number 150. From January of 1968, it's a new year. Woo! Happy New Year! Written by Stan Lee, penciled by Jack Kirby, inked by Vince Collada, and lettered by Sam Rosen. The Wrecker grabs <laughs> hold of Thor's collar, hoisting him up to check if he's still alive. Finding the hero limp and without a detectable pulse, he triumphantly declares that Thor is either dead or dying, and he doesn't care which. He drops Thor's body back down to the ground and stalks off, declaring that if he can defeat Thor this easily, there's nothing he can't do. And he's got a point. <laughs> yeah. yeah, if the Avengers ever hear about this... The Avengers aren't getting involved. <laughs> they, they don't care. They, they don't, don't care. They don't care if Thor dies. Thor didn't bother to page them, so fuck it. Yeah. Which is a pager. Not picking up your phone means you get suspended from the Avengers. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> Even if you were taking a dump at the time. But Thor didn't call, so fuck yeah. him. Yep. As the dust settles, a slender hand reaches down towards Thor's body. Thor has died honorably in combat, and Hela herself has come to take him to rest. Huh. However, she's surprised to find a spark of life remains. Thor's ghostly astral form lifts from his body... Begging audience with Hela. Are you trying to ask something? I have seen many people die in Mar the Marvel comics, including people who have to do with Thor and Asgard, and I've never seen anything like this. Thor's kind of a big deal. Yeah. I guess he is. I guess I've never seen him die like this. Hela, and he's the crown prince, right? Hela has always wanted Thor's soul specifically. Mm. In fact, that's the story of how he first wielded Mjolnir, is because she was trying to get his soul. <laughs> I gotta say, this outfit has Hella looking significantly less fine than on the cover. Yeah, it's that not is good. True. It's very busy. It's can't even really make out her it's shape. Very yellow. Yeah. It's very Loki. I disagree. I don't agree with that. Loki yellow, though, Ooh. in color. Oh, like Loki gold. Yeah, yes. it's pretty much his color scheme, but just a different style. Well, she is his daughter. Yep. <laughs> Loki arrives at the Norn Queen's Ooh. stronghold and is granted asylum. They explain what happened to the Wrecker, but say that it worked out because he killed Thor. The Norn Queen is relieved to hear that it's all over, but Loki quickly insists that Baldur must be the next to go. Apparently, Thor pointing out the flaws in Loki's plan really struck a nerve. <laughs> so now we have a list of people to kill. Yes. Great. Sif and Baldur are riding through the Norn Queen's woods, eager to complete their quest, but still on guard. Suddenly, they're attacked by... This guy, this who fucking the, colorful who nightmare. Who are you? A giant barbarian who pins Baldur to a tree with a forked arrow. <laughs> oh my god, it is. That's why. Holy when you could just shit. kill him, you could have just killed him. Why did you? What? Why? I think he was trying to, but Baldur was. He was just trying to, but too Baldur skinny. juked too good. He's too <laughs> small. Too small. Sif says she's coming to help. But Baldur warns her off, declaring that Carnilla will see how he deals with this. This is the first time that we hear the name Carnilla, by the way. I That's the Norn Queen, then? Yes, it is. Ah. He pushes the giant arrow off of himself and hurls it back at the assailant. <laughs> the two then draw their swords and start fighting in earnest. Uh, this doesn't really look like a fight so much as... I mean, okay, Dodging maybe... and dodging and dodging and dodging. Uh... It's a little, uh, okay, it's a little Elden Ring. I don't have a lot to say about this fight, but I do think it's pretty cool because it clearly shows why Baldur is very highly regarded in Asgard. Yeah, Baldur's more than holding his own here. It shows combat prowess a lot better than Silver Age comics normally do, I think. Yeah. 
they actually spent some time on this fight. Mm-hmm. Now that Baldur's done dodging, now Baldur's getting to stomping. Yes. Having defeated the giant, Baldur turns back to Sif, only to find her missing, seemingly without a trace. He heads off into the forest to search for her. Hela insists that Thor must come with her as a special place in Valhalla has been prepared for him. He refuses, however, saying that he's not quite dead yet. He turns off, declaring his intent to fulfill his oath and protect the Earth. I'm not dead yet! Yeah, that's what I was gonna say! Though he's only an astral ghost, he's still determined to do whatever possible to stop the Wrecker. That sounds pretty dead to me, my dude! (laughs) It's fine. The Wrecker, speaking of whom, is wreaking absolute havoc on the city. The place is fucking on fire. Buildings have been toppled. The police have him at gunpoint, but they aren't really in control of the situation. And the Avengers aren't picking up the phone. No. Wrecker tears up the sidewalk and throws it at the cops, who ineffectually shoot at him. Maybe they can shoot the rocks so they don't hit them. Right. (laughs) Thor leaps at the Wrecker without hesitation, but his ghostly form passes through without resistance. The Wrecker can't see, hear, or feel him, but neither do any blows affect him. He watches helplessly as the Wrecker topples yet another building. It just needs enrichment. Which is kind of getting old, but I guess it's his thing. I mean, he's not a creative sort, I don't think. He's not, no. Meanwhile, in the Norn Forest, Baldur hunts for Sif to no avail. Some trolls lurk nearby, preparing to deploy some kind of sleeping gas. Um, Baldur does absolutely nothing to avoid this and falls unconscious. <laughs> um, the trolls tie him to some contraption, wheel him off to see Cardilla. Thing, it's, it's if it's, you it's, don't feel like whole carrying someone on a pole, the Baldur tying up device. Yes, that's exactly what it is. It looks like it was designed to fit him. I think you'll find that many Asgardians are around the same size, my friend. Most of them are, in fact. That's very sad. <laughs> They're all kind of one size. But they're mostly just, like, Mm people-sized. Well, no, they're pretty tall for people. Well, yeah, but, like, comparatively to all amongst themselves. They're they're tall and quite burly. Mm -hmm. But not, like, more than a human could be. Yeah. Anyway, Um, now that we've solved this mystery. Yeah. Sif apparently also fell victim to this ploy and is already held captive by Carnilla. That sucks. Yeah. Wow. Okay. She, She insists that they came in peace. Which I don't think is fooling anyone, but points for trying. Carnilla's hot. Yes. <laughs> that hair, though. Yeah, the hair's intense. Well, she's hot in like an evil queen kind of way, but yes. she's hot. <laughs> Sif tries to tell Carnilla what's up, but she obviously already knows and isn't having it. She shows Sif an image of Thor's body still laying amid the rubble where it fell, and Sif is understandably distraught. Yes. Sif demands that Carnilla send her to Thor's side, which Carnilla agrees to with all the charm of a Disney villain. (laughs) If Thor lives, Sif can only save him by killing the Wrecker, and Carnilla graciously offers her a way to do that, revealing that she has come into possession of the Destroyer. Oh Oh, no. That's why you don't leave it lying around, you fucking You don't just leave this thing wherever bad (laughs) things happen. Carnilla offers Sif the use of the Destroyer if she's daring enough to try. She agrees quickly, and her soul is then transferred into the ancient weapon. Hot. Before it's Carnilla fine. gleefully zaps it down to Earth. This is fine. This, this is, is fine. fine. This is fine. This sounds like a great idea, Sif. <laughs> it's going well. Loki peeks out from nearby, and the two laugh <laughs> over the perfect execution of their plan to send Sif in the guise of the Destroyer to meet her mutual doom with the Wrecker. <laughs> I don't know why Sif, why has Carnilla got such a hate on for Sif? Because they're women, so they have to hate each other. Okay. Thor senses the Destroyer before it arrives, but knowing he can do nothing in his astral form, he returns to his body and attempts to join with it once more. Hela is gone now, content to wait until the time is ripe to collect him. She'll get him eventually. Exactly. That's the thing. She's the goddess of death. She gets everyone eventually. No one actually wins against Hela. No. Unfortunately, the Marvel editing staff do defeat her a lot. That's, yeah. (laughs) He awakens and once more goes to join the battle. The Destroyer approaches the Wrecker, who is none the wiser for the imminent threat. The Destroyer rushes him, and he takes a mighty swing with his crowbar, only to see it smash across the Asgardian armor. (laughs) And he (laughs) he cries and whines about this. (laughs) Who are you? You Why don't broke you my crowbar. <laughs> Who are you? What, what are you? Why don't you say anything? <laughs> this caused.
causes him to fly into a panic Arr. just as the destroyer backhands him across the face, then shoots a beam out of its hand. He hits the ground like a sack of bricks, and Sif rejoices inwardly over saving her love. Speaking of whom, Thor arrives on the scene to see the destroyer and immediately leaps into action. As Sif waves and approaches joyfully, he runs forward, determined to stop the destroyer, even at the cost of his own life. So, quick question. How powered is Thor right now? Uh, he strength still only. only has super strength. Hmm. That'll be great against the destroyer. Time for Triton. Oh, the right. Strange, Don't you guys care about Triton? The str- strange well, saga he of the look. first inhuman to leave Adelan and the great refuge. And this is not the Triton I remember. But humans <laughs> it's a burly dude trod. with the beard. Anyway. Yeah, this is Triton. <laughs> that was a bad joke. It was. Fuck you anyway. Um... We have Triton, who's another one of the Inhumans. Triton can restrain himself no longer. <laughs> uh-huh. Uh, I'm pleased to deliver all, uh... Plaudits. Plaudits? What the heck are plaudits? Like... Like the accolades down the same below. as accolades. Yeah. yeah. Are, are we sure for this exquisite epic? Are we, are we sure? Are you yeah. sure, guys? Are we sure they deserve, um, plaudits and accolades? For this I point? mean, look That's... at this man's... Abs, they're very fucked up, actually. They, yeah, it they looks are very actually bad. very bad. Something is wrong with his body. Well, maybe that's just how he looks as a that's his underwater power. man. Yeah. He's got fucked up abs, but that's how he's meant to be. So he's swimming through the water, trying to figure out what's past Adelan in the water. And there's a big squid. A big squid and a boat. Yep. Yep, yeah, he comes up, and yeah, there's the wreckage of sailing vessels, but, and he sits there and be like, we're better, but yeah, wow, there's proof that other people live here. Like, apparently they forgot about the cavemen they were watching so intently, and they the, forgot so, all about that. And the first person he finds isn't really much of a person. He could be a person, don't be racist. <laughs> it's a fish man. And when he gets up and he's like, wow, there's an island, I'm fucking hungry. But there's something going on down below the water, so I should probably check that off before I take care of my munchies. And man like being It is like a swamp creature looking motherfucker. Fish man. Fish man. And so he starts swimming. It's like, oh well he's hunting, I guess. <laughs> oh, no. And then he sees that what the guy is hunting is apparently a lady. But then it turns out that it wasn't actually a fish man attacking a lady. It was a movie all along. And now Triton is here fighting this fish man to defend this lady in front of the cameras. They better have gotten that coverage. Um, yeah. Wait, why do they have guns? And then he throws the fish man more at the with, cameraman. More with Stan in movies. Yeah, um, they have tranquil- yeah, again. <laughs> they have tranquilizer guns. I guess if any sharks came around when they were filming or something, they were just gonna tranquilize dart Because I'm sure them. that would work. And so they're like, I'm gonna get him. And then they- wait, why are they blasters now? I thought they were tranquilizer darts. They're now, tranquilizer blasters. They're tranquilizer blasters. guns that the cameramen just have. Did I miss something? Is this not a fucking... No, it is a fucking movie scene. A- Why is this <laughs> happening? So they, Welcome um, to the Inhumans! They uh, pick this guy up and put him in a water cube. At, at the end. <laughs> That's it. That's the story. Yeah, they bring him up and then they're like, we're gonna put him on exhibition and make a fortune out of him. That guy can put horror like, actors like me out of business. Man, fuck these guys. <laughs> He's valid. But... They uh, sail off into the sunset, and that's it for us right now. That's it for Triton. Everybody give it up for Triton. Woo! A for effort for Triton. I, I don't think he I, I, res- that. I respect his um, I respect his intentions. I, I, okay, okay, I will give him that, and only that. Just saw a lady getting attacked by a fish man. He's like, hell no, I'm a fish man. I'm not going to stand for this shit. You'll give a name, bad name to all fish men. <laughs> I'm a fish man. Don't insult <laughs> fish men like this. My scales are ruffled. <laughs> <laughs> that must be very uncomfortable. I imagine so. Anyway, so let's read Thor number 151. To rise again. To rise again from February of 1968. Written by Stan Lee, penciled by Jack Kirby, inked by Vince Coletta, and lettered by Sam Rosen. Yeah, I probably should have noticed it was Marvel Comics Group. 
Because it says it right above that. <laughs> Marvel Comics group yeah. right above it. Thor relentlessly attacks the Destroyer, even as Sif shrinks back from his blows. She can't talk in this form, so she's desperately searching for a way to communicate with him. Thor notices that this is pretty strange behavior, but decides that the Destroyer is trying to trick him and that he can't fall for it. Because this is a thing that the Destroyer is known for yeah, doing. That's what yeah, the that's what the does. Destroyer does. The Destroyer is known for trickery. Sif holds up a card to shield herself from his blows, but as she's doing so, she realizes that she's losing control over the Destroyer. Her determination to save Thor allowed her to override it, but now that that's done, its baser programming is taking over. She tries to run away, but it's too late. The Destroyer takes a swing back at Thor, and Sif is reduced to a prisoner, helpless to do anything about this. Couldn't you just leave? Like, I thought that was the thing. Couldn't you just stop being the Destroyer? Um, yeah, that did happen before. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. I don't know why it doesn't happen now, but... Do people remember you can just leave the Destroyer Mm, later in the future? Maybe Carnilla fucked with it. Maybe... Because last time that it happened, it happened because the Destroyer itself decided that the dude had to go out of it for a little while. So maybe the Destroyer itself has to decide. So, so okay. there's, the, there's like a person inside the Destroyer Mutual already. consent. <laughs> gotcha. Sif realizes a bit too late that Carnilla tricked her. The Destroyer was made for exactly one thing and no one can change that. Which is why it's called the Destroyer. <laughs> no shit. Hasn't everybody talked about how big and bad the fucking Destroyer Odin made is? Yes. Cool. Maybe maybe do something about that? Not just... Spatoom! Spatoom. <laughs> Loki and Carnilla watched this fight happening with glee. Carnilla took some time to change into a really bad outfit. <laughs> yeah, this is significantly worse. It is. You really do have the time to change outfits, don't you? <laughs> she probably used magic to do it. Let's be real. She gloats over Sif's body, standing stock still without a soul to move it. Loki demands that they deal with Balder next, but Carnilla has other ideas, as evidenced by the fact that she's had her guards strip him half naked. <laughs> okay. I, I see, we're at... <laughs> we're, well, we know what she's planning. <clears throat> she commands him to serve her, and he graciously declines. <laughs> you don't say! This is a little bit gross. This panel in particular is a uh-huh. little bit gross. <laughs> I mean, look. Am I so distasteful, then? Doth my beauty not inflame thee? You're not gonna have a fun in time with Thor eye, there X-Men. Be, in, <laughs> if this is a little oh bit no. too salacious. Uh, no, it's... Oh god, I, I have an idea where your X-Men are going. <laughs> It's not too much, I just think it's... Hey, it's, uh, okay. it's not my fault the X-Men join a BDSM I'm, club. I'm... <laughs> they don't join it! They become it! <laughs> okay, no, their villains are one. I'm okay. having an extreme reaction for the sake of comedy, thank you. Indeed. In Baldur's eyes, there can be no beauty where evil dwells, and save for Loki, there can be none more villainous than thee. I feel like that's dramatic. A little bit. <laughs> Suddenly, Balder's really over the top. <laughs> yes, he is. I love Balder. He's so extra. Suddenly, a weapon is hurled toward Balder by a new and unknown party who declares that they will now kill all of them, good and evil alike. Uh, so maybe someone more evil than, uh, the, than, than Loki and Carnilla? <laughs> who knows? Before we see who it is, though, we gotta go back to Thor. Thor fights on, determined to do something about this situation. What a kick. When the Destroyer tries to strike him, he dodges out of the way. Before grabbing its hand. Only prepared to disable it somehow. But the destroyer is unconcerned. It just picks him up and throws him like a rag doll. Running out of options in time, Thor sends up a prayer, begging Odin to return his powers to him for the sake of all humanity. In the Imperial Palace of Asgard, some wizard or there's another fucking TV. Shush. In the Imperial Palace of Asgard, some wizard or something has just finished making a new viewing crystal. I guess that's how long it takes. Odin approaches and asks how the battle is going, which confuses the wizard, but Odin assures him that he knows what's going on. Which <laughs> I don't know. I don't know why he would. Oh, okay. If he if knows you... what's going on, why, why does he need the right, crystal? Exactly. And if he needs the crystal, does he just think- Maybe he's just assuming he knows what's going on because he knew what was going on like five minutes ago. Before he got the <laughs> TV repair man up here. He just assumes Thor's always in a fight. He's just got that, like... <laughs> What's my son doing now? He's just got that, like, beautiful mind where he can predict everything that's gonna happen with absolute accuracy. <laughs> so he doesn't actually need this orb. 
Yeah. But, but it's nice to watch the TV sometimes. The orb is for show. <laughs> <laughs> the wizard steps aside to give Odin a good look at exactly how it's going. And even this guy starts pleading with Odin to fucking do something. <laughs> At this point, Odin decides to explain that the real reason he took Thor's powers away was because he had forgotten humility and needed to learn it again by getting the snot beaten out How of him. Many How many times? When did he fr- get humility? Fucking when? Dad of the year. Fucking when? How many Fucking times when? do you have Name to break your Name it for me, son. Odin. Fucking when? When was he being anything other than modest and humble? Right? Odin declares that Thor has pro- <laughs> Okay, full page. Oh, there, buddy, your head's a little big. <laughs> it's a little big, yeah. yeah. It's like Stan start not Stan. Jack started drawing him at the bottom. He's like, oh yeah, I know his how much feet- page I have. Oh shit! His, his feet are fucking huge. <laughs> and his arms are super short uh, and his head is super hey, big. Hey, Odin? He looks like a Funko Pop. When did you start looking like <laughs> Thanos? Again, I think he just started at the bottom and then realized, oh shit, I don't have enough space to right. finish this guy. Uh, draw his head and then just kind of squish him down. I mean, hey, I've done that before, <laughs> but I draw digitally so I can just resize things. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the boots are weird. It looks like he's wearing the, the thigh highs. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Odin declares that Thor has proven himself and points his magic rod at the viewing crystal currently depicting his favorite son. He names Thor Thunder God once more and returns to him all the associated powers and enchantments. <sighs> that that is so boring. Right? Again? Thor suddenly feels like he just slammed a Red Bull with a handful of those energy <laughs> pills that truckers take. He doesn't seem to realize that his power has returned, but actually thinks that it's one last rush of adrenaline before he actually for real dies. I mean, it could be. <laughs> it still could be. He charges forward, feeling invigorated. Thor Asgard! Okay, was it confirmed before that if you die in the Matrix, you die in real life with this thing? Because Sif is thinking it. I don't know if that was confirmed before, but now we have a new problem. Apparently, if Thor does succeed in destroying the Destroyer, Sif dies. I don't know if that was true before or not. I could have sworn it was. Well, you think so? I don't remember. I don't remember either. I don't even remember if it ever came up, if I'm being honest. It may have. I'm, I'm not sure. Apparently, John remembers this. It, so. you, well, you I know it, it sounds familiar. I do remember that if, like, you kill the body of the person who's in the destroyer, mm. then they die. But, like, yeah, okay, but I don't remember anything it. about destroying the that, destroyer kills the person. Like, yeah, definitely played games with uh, killing someone inside that the destroyer. Right. I just don't remember what. There are different elements of killing the person inside the destroyer, and it gets yep. complicated. Yeah. All right. Anyway, this Except is kind of maiden faced with problems such as this. <laughs> anyway, this is kind of a no win situation unless you're Loki and Carnilla, I guess. Yeah. Well, who are promptly getting murdered. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> she ponders this predicament as as the destroyer, propelled by a directive of its own, pulls Mjolnir from Thor's hand and moves to strike him with it. However, the hammer squirms in her slash its hands, trying even now to return to its master. The destroyer lets go, and the hammer speeds away to Thor's hand once again. Thor starts to say something about even though he doesn't have power, and then realizes that Mjolnir just returned to him on its own. I love that it's such an autopilot reaction for him to catch it that he didn't register it at first. That's you awesome. I love that. He's a himbo! No, yeah. that's I keep excellent. telling you. It's excellent. I love it. Finally, he understands that his powers are back, and he's immediately overjoyed, Giving a big grin. Ah! <laughs> giving a big grin as he declares that now the Destroyer will see what he's really capable of. Oh, boy. Oh, rip Destroyer. Uh, see a Sif. You were <laughs> interesting. Um, was she? She's barely been there. Okay, yeah. you, you, you existed. Yeah. Yeah. With one mighty swing, he topples the Destroyer, laying it flat on its back. Sif continues to struggle in vain as the Destroyer's visor begins to open in preparation for its most deadly attack. Meanwhile, Loki and Carnilla react with outrage to the newcomer, who is quickly revealed to be Ulik, with a squad of trolls at his back. Ulik. I don't remember Ulik. The troll man. Well, there have been a lot of troll men. (laughs) Ulik is the troll with the metal pounders. Oh, oh, Ulik the troll with the pounders. Yes. (laughs) That's incredibly memorable. Yes. Um, that no, that helped. That salt that sort of fell out for me, actually. Good job. He tells Carnilla that the trolls will obey her no longer. 
Carnilla launches launches a rebuttal with a spell, but is shocked when Ulic becomes wreathed in flames and just keeps on talking. <laughs> Apparently, Gyarados had his wizards... <laughs> I knew you were going to laugh about Gyarados. <laughs> you were right. <laughs> you got me there. Apparently Gyarados had his own wizards put some enchantments on Ulix, so he's now protected from magical attacks, among other things. Hey, that's a good move. Balder, seeing Carnilla's fear, declares that he will defend her if she releases his bonds. This feels... And also let Sif go, please. <laughs> she agrees to that pretty quickly and frees him, allowing him to grab the weapon that Ulix threw earlier. Okay, local beefcake, get on it. <laughs> Balder is savvy to the situation, though, and seeks a deal. If he kills Ulik, Carnilla will never trouble Asgard again. Ulik hears this and finds it pretty funny that this shirtless pretty boy is going to defeat him. <laughs> you clearly don't know Balder, my dude. Exactly. Fleeing from the Destroyer, Thor reflects on how, if he didn't have his godly powers, he definitely would not have gotten away from that last blast. <laughs> Unfortunately, he doesn't have the godly power of not cornering himself as he runs into a blind alley it's and is pressed like up against a wall as the Destroyer is the tiniest advances. alley. Like, <laughs> this man is so big no, compared no. to this alley no, that just on, standing Thor. up straight, he nearly <laughs> fits in it. Hey, hey, Thor! Don't you have the power to go through walls with your fists or your hammer? Or he can something? fly, right? Or that too. Why are you You've stuck? You've got a fucking you fucking moron. Why are you stuck? I've changed my mind about Thor being a dumbass, being cute. <laughs> Here's my theory: He didn't have his powers just moments ago. He He's was still so in used power to brain. yes. He was so used to not having his powers that he just keeps forgetting. <laughs> That's cute. Okay, I can roll so, with that. Now we have a cliffhanger. We're going to cover the end of this in the next Thor episode, I believe. Excellent. And now, in human at large. large. No, just the one. Just the one. Just the one. I like this guy. I like <laughs> this guy in the back, yeah, with the just, with the short shorts the and the muscle shorts. tank yeah. and oh, the man. sailor hat. And a shotgun. <laughs> oh, this God, guy, I did not see that. This guy, the queer representation we've all been <laughs> I mean, come on. background extra. Look, they've been drawing very gay-looking men. Triton is completely dickless. Oh, uh, well, you know, he is a fish. Fish. fish don't have dicks. That's true. Uh, I, don't, I would be more uncomfortable to see a fish dick right now. God, I was so, for the longest time, I was so bothered. Like, is Lockjaw actually, like, a dog or an inhuman that is a dog? I don't. He, he's a dog know. that isn't inhuman. Somehow, yeah, he's sure. he's just a, he's a dog. Well, he, I don't know what his dog. deal is, but like, yeah, yes, I was. I've all, I typically was all dogs are inhuman. <laughs> yes, <laughs> you know, if you want to be specific, all dogs are inhuman. So Lockjaw is not special in that regard. <laughs> in that regard. But anyway, yeah, I'm just glad that <laughs> just not like a dude who's been trapped in dog form hey, since he hit puberty or whatever. I ran, hey, I ran into a, a mutant who basically became like that. I'm someone, trying to remember who that someone is. Someone to do with Hope. One of the friend, one of the people uh, she collected. Uh, Hope's posse. Yeah, in Hope's posse. One a guy. Oh, got oh, 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 oh. Okay, I know who you mean. I forget his fucking name though. So do Primal I. Primal or something. something. Man, this is gonna be a long episode. It, I know it is. <laughs> I'm sorry. And I need to take my medicine, but that's okay. We're just gonna have to live with this. Uh Triton's stuck in the water cube, and there's a film producer who's like, "We're gonna put him on exhibition, and we'll make a fortune out of him." And Triton's like, I could escape whatever I wanted, but I want to learn more about them. Does Triton understand what they're saying, is my question? Well, like, does he understand Do them? inhumans speak the same they language? Do they speak, speak English? English? I doubt it. Right? It doesn't make much sense Oops. to me. Especially considering they don't know about any of these people. Right. So, okay. Find of a Let's century. So, he comes back. They bring him to, um... They bring him to, it looks like probably New York, but who fucking knows? Well, it's New York. Where else could this possibly be? And they're like, we're gonna get him a better glass cage. And he's like, yeah, nah. He understood. And he um, punches his way out of here. So now we know he understood. Maybe he has secondary inhuman bullshit. Maybe his baby power was, like, speaking languages and <laughs> shit. <laughs> Because they have those. <laughs> it just didn't fade. <laughs> That's his baby genius power. He's as strong as a whale. Well, he starts fighting guys, and um, 
Mostly he's just fighting guys. And he destroys and then, the ship. Yeah, he destroys the ship or something destroys the ship. Yeah, he destroys the ship. <laughs> Everybody abandons ship. Um, except for this guy who uh, may be actively falling or may be hanging onto the wreck. I don't know what's going on. But the film producer and everyone is like, this fucking sucks. The Good. fuck is this guy? And this lady's like, well, yeah, he wasn't bothering us. We did try to fucking capture him. Shut up! What's that got to do with yeah, it? Yeah, that doesn't fucking matter. What do you know, you useless female? <laughs> and then Triton flies, I guess, and away from the exploding ship. Falls <laughs> into the water and goes to the city. And into the ocean. And then he goes back to Adelaide. It's like, I'll be back, though, because I'm like, this is interesting. But back to Adelaide. I'm going to sink back into the ocean now. Why? Why are you trying to make the Inhumans a thing? Stop trying to make the Inhumans a thing! <laughs> the Inhumans are never going to be a thing. Uh, n- not even if you're trying to kill the X-Men with them. <laughs> the Inhumans are the fetch of the Marvel. <laughs> so that's all our issues for today, but... Unfortunately, we have more things to talk about. <laughs> Unfortunately. So, this episode's gonna run kind of long. Yeah, uh, spoilers for anyone who hasn't seen Doctor Strange, but we're gonna be talking about Doctor Strange, because we just got back from seeing Doctor Strange. Indeed. Indeed. Ooh, boy. Okay, um, where to start? <laughs> I liked it. <laughs> oh, it was a heck of a movie. <laughs> I think it's probably in my top five MCU movies now. What's the rest? <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> I don't know. I don't have a tier list. You just said it's in your top five. I liked it a lot. That's all well, I meant. Sam <laughs> Raimi brought something that no one else has really been bringing. I mean, hey. arguably, I think James Gunn has done some okay, but stuff. Who's done horror? No, the- no one has done. They they wanted to, I mean, Fox wanted to do horror with the New Mutants, but then they just punted it around a whole bunch, and we watched it on a projector without a light bulb, so... I need to watch that, and I need to watch the sad, wet, uh, slapping sound of the end of the Fox era of Marvel oh, movies. God, I just... Well, we're not talking about New Mutants now, though. That no, was we're my not mistake. talking about the New Mutants. <laughs> that no, was my no. mistake. Although, there was a mutant... There was. Yeah. Uh, I knew he was in it before we went. I, yeah, I, I know you mentioned that his voice was in the trailer, and I didn't hear it because we were watching it in a fucking car, mm-hmm. but I, Charles Xavier! They and killed jo- him again! <laughs> John Krasinski was a really good Reed Richards to me. He was pretty good, honestly. He had the look down. He, Yeah, he they looks perfect. Al- they also murdered him. <laughs> they murdered all of them. Yeah, they yeah. murdered everyone. That's, yeah, now that we're talking about it, this is probably the grisliest entry God, into was, the MCU definitely. for sure. This was brutally grisly. Like, I thought uh, the Illuminati was really cool, although I was surprised that there was no Iron Man on the yeah. Illuminati. I was sh- very, almost 100% sure that they were going to have superior Iron Man. Hold on. There. That would have been interesting. Okay, okay. It also so... kind of makes sense with all the Ultron shit. Right, exactly. <laughs> Who was in charge of the Ultron shit? Exactly! Right? I, I guess just, it'd have to be Reed. It would have made sense if fucking Reed, Tony, Tony was there. Tony, it makes perfect sense. Uh, Hank, Pym? None of them. Yes. There's, there are people who are connected to Ultron, and there are tons of oh Ultron Oh my god, bucks. the Ultron universe was so pretty, though. It was it really was. pretty. <laughs> It was, and that's um, what made the when you, the right turn out of there the Ultron drones. Like, oh shit! <laughs> Ultron drones. What the fuck? The city was like solar punk. It was beautiful. It was. There was plants everywhere. Uh, give us that thing. better world. Um, I was surprised that Wanda was a straight up villain. <laughs> I I, hate, I think that he, it was the right choice. <sighs> there was some good shit going. On. I I almost cried when she was. Doing the the spell at first, the one where she was just looking at the different places in the multiverse, mm-hmm. seeing her children in these various aspects, mm-hmm. that almost made me fucking cry. Uh-huh. I mean, they took but they took a, an idea. I'm going to have my children, and gave her the full. Well, this is what happens if you try to have your children. I thought that was interesting. I know that a lot of Wanda fans out there probably will not and probably hate it, but they all hate Wanda. MCU Wanda anyway for understandable reasons, yeah, but yeah. you know. 
Well, yeah, but MCU Wanda fans probably aren't going to love it either. Yeah. Uh, at, oh, oh, here's the fun one, though. 616. Uh, they're fucking uh, don't double do it down again. on the fuck stupid em, MCU fuck em, fuck is 616 thing. Fuck em, fuck em, That's going to sound great going off act and back <laughs> Yeah, and fantastic. <laughs> great job. <laughs> yeah, I like, hate that shit. They, they did it. They just had to do it. They just had to call it. Oh, 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 speaking of Charles, like we were several minutes ago and it's been a while, <laughs> <laughs> they did Psychic Warfare and I fucking loved it. It was pretty yeah. good. Also, there was some cool symbolism in there, there was. of, um, in the Psychic Warfare, Wanda, Wanda not, um, corrupted by the Darkhold, un- buried underneath like a pile of rubble. And then at the end of the movie... She buries herself under a pile of rubble. It was really fucking excellent. And the fucking scene where she realizes she's wrong and she stands up and you see the statue in the same pose behind her on Mm -hmm. the temple wall. Oh, fuck, there was some beautiful shit. I'm just thinking, though, like, even when uh, the MCU decides we want the most powerful characters to fight each other, you don't usually see that Oh, yeah, this guy who is definitely strong. Well, that guy over there could rip him in half in about two seconds. And because he does, we really got to see how different they are in strength. It's really interesting to me that Sam Raimi ends up directing adaptations of two different Stan Lee and Steve Ditko products because... He's comfortable with that stuff. It's it's just funny to me, though, because most of the comics, the early ones, were Stan and Jack, and there were mm-hmm. those two that were Stan and Steve. Mm-hmm. Well, he's comfortable with the older stuff. Well, it's, it's not even that. It's just funny out of all the movies he could pick, and he did true, really true. well with kind of the weirdness of all of it. He just kind of leaned into it. And that is something. The, diff- the uh, unreality of Marvel did a really good job with it. Um, the, but the, the fucking w- musical combat scene. God, the musical oh combat. God. There was no good reason for the musical combat scene. It was cool. It was that is exactly so why it was good. there. It was so uh, good, I thought man. all of the magic and all of the effects were really cool. I mean, there's a lot to be said about the MCU leaning a little, a little too hard on CGI, but Doctor Strange is one of the things that you have to. It no, works so and perfectly. It worked really well. Even then, they did stuff. They did old school camera. Yeah, they did wobbly stuff from old horror films. I yep. haven't seen that since like. Stan, uh, fucking Raimi can direct a fucking horror movie. Oh my god, well, the yeah, part welcome where to Evil Dead guys, the part where Wanda looks directly at the audience. Oh, there was so much shit that was just really well done. Like, welcome to Evil Dead, guys. <laughs> and there's all the horror of for. possessions and fucking um, Dead Strange's dead soul oh of the God. damned cape. It was so <laughs> awesome. Oh, you made a cape out of damn souls. My God. It was so cool. Oh, that, that was, was metal as hell. Oh, God. And we've neglected to speak about one aspect, America. America. Oh, boy. Um, there's a lot to say about America. I'm really, really happy that they did not shy away from the queer aspects of the character. <laughs> I, I, that's another time I almost cried when they said moms. And moms. Your got, moms. And then we got a flashback of them. Mm-hmm. And she had the fucking pride pin on her jacket. Yeah. Try censoring that out easily. It okay, was they can probably probably yeah. Bonkers. I don't see why that would be hard, but they're not going to because they banned it. <laughs> yes, hopefully in China, and probably, probably in China, and probably, probably in, in Russia China. too. Let's be real. Probably, I feel like Russia's busy. Uh, yes, they're busy, but they're going to ban it because gay. That's true. I don't think there's anything hopefully about it because <laughs> there are gay people in those countries. Indeed. Yes, but that doesn't mean Russia's going to allow that. I'm aware. Anyway, um, we were talking about America. Mm-hmm. America. Yeah. Fuck yeah. He is so. <laughs> from the, uh, apparently from a gay, a lesbian universe? Lesbian utopia, in fact. God. I don't remember what it's called. It has a name. I thought it was utopia. No. No? No. Okay. It should be. It's not. Well, it should be, yeah, but it's not. <laughs> uh, yeah, so we were actually talking about this in the car, but, um... I was kind of afraid that they were really dulling her down a little bit based on how she was in the trailers, but 
the movie actually really made it work because it's kind of more of like her coming into herself. Yeah. This is her origin story as far as the MCU is concerned. Right. Pretty much. And that works for me. And you see her turn on the spunk at the end. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. And she's a badass at the end. Yep. And like, I'm fine with it. Am I particularly like super enthused? No. But I am fine with it. Well, it just means that the next time she appears, she's, she's gonna She's gotta be, be kick-ass. Uh-huh. Oh, yeah. And if she's, she's not kick-ass, I'm not gonna be happy. Exactly. But I guess that does ask one question. Where does she go from here? It seems to be a weird trend, though, of them doing with Teen Heroes a build-up to when they are the character. Yeah. I thought the visual effects of her powers were pretty cool. They were pretty. Oh, yeah. Like, the fact that every time she hit something, it would break into a star, that was really cool. Yeah, I liked that. I'm not sure what I think about the, uh, this uh, turned into something else, about the love story. Like, I felt like they at least did something, as opposed to the last one, but it wasn't, like, it felt weird. It felt a little shoehorned. I am legitimately glad it ended with a, with not a kiss. Yeah. Yeah. It, it was closure. A oh, mutual ending, yes. I will tell you what that was. That was called closure. They both, <laughs> those two characters needed closure. I'm uh, glad Steven Wong Str- is the Sorcerer Supreme now. Me too. He's been Sorcerer Supreme since, uh... I don't uh, think he's ever been Sorcerer Supreme in the comics. Really? I, yeah, I think so. I'd have to research That's that. Sad. Yeah, I mean, granted, I've never read, read Doctor Strange. Because that sounds like something that would happen in comics. It does sound like it, but I don't think he has been. He should be. He should be. We have too long of a show to have a We Google Things segment this <laughs> week. <laughs> Wong deserves it. Wong deserves it. Good for Wong. Uh, How we- come Wong doesn't have a cool artifact like the other wizards? Wong... Because I think it does. Uh, Doctor Strange, I don't has remember all what it is, parts? but I thought, what does he have? Is it his? It wasn't his throwy thing, his uh, grappling hook. Which, I don't know. Uh, he did just lose. He did just lose it. That's true. That's a shitty magic item. I don't know. I feel like a cool grappling hook is pretty awesome, but it's no. God, I love Baron Mordo's fucking boots. I'm all about that. It's not as good as the boots, and it's not as good as the cape. Let's yeah. get that straight. Absolutely. He might have had a different thing. I don't remember. It's been a while since I've seen the first Doctor Strange. Uh-huh. Um, I didn't notice anything this time, but it was, overall, I enjoyed it. That was a fun movie. Oh, we didn't rate our if, if oh. issues. Oops. Or the movie. I guess we can rate everything. Okay. Uh, rate these comics that we just read. Um, three and a half out of five. Enjoyable. The Inhumans are terrible. The Inhumans, five out of five. Rate <laughs> <Right> again. <laughs> John. Now, I will say this, uh, I will give it more than anything the s- Circus of Crime, or whatever they're called. That's what they're called. I can't- <sighs> They're called the Circus of Crime, indeed. Give us a rating, John. We want to mm. quit, I need to take my meds. I out of in. Those are numbers. Sure, fuck you. I'm not <laughs> doing imaginary number bullshit, die. I'd, I'd give it four out of five, I really like it's this story. It's more memorable yeah. than, uh, the, than the, the Circus of Crime, I'll give you that, I- I'm not good at number ratings, but it's I just, like, way more memorable. This is the first time Thor really comes close to actually losing. Yeah, I think that was nice, and I like that it was all just together. It felt and like an actual arc for once. I like how Loki and Carnilla feel as villains together. They're really good. I like the ploy to get Sif into the Destroyer. I think that's really cool. Yeah. So, four out of five. I'm at three and a half. I don't know, this is all just a little too silly for my taste. Well, so be it. Anyway, um, Doctor Strange. What did we think of Doctor Strange? Four out of five? Why not? I was gonna say five out of five, (laughs) actually. That was a very good movie. I enjoyed it a lot, and I want to see it again. I don't understand. Also, the end credit sequence, the second one especially. Mm -hmm. It's over! I'm tied between that and uh, Cap's PSA at the end of Homecoming. Okay, that was pretty good. That, that um, was pretty good. But The best post credit scene is in Hawkeye, actually. <laughs> well, I wouldn't know about that. I haven't finished it yet. You haven't? I'm guessing you I also haven't, haven't watched seen Moon Knight, Knight either. No, I know. You I need know, to watch I know, Moon Knight. I know, I know, so, I know, I know. So, here's the thing. Can I be real with you guys? Yeah. We made a lot of jokes on this here podcast, but... I actually really liked Moon Knight. Moon Knight made me feel things. 
like really made me feel things. I'm I not, liked not joking it. about that. I liked it a lot. But it also made me more excited for Thor 4 because okay. it really did more to set up like celestial godly Marvel. Okay. Oh, yeah. because they more were than just we've had. Up, they were just straight up gods. They weren't aliens who come from a special place. No, those are just the Egyptian gods. I thought it was really cool. I thought the fact that his suit was CGI sucked and they should Mr. not have Knight done was that. Great. Mr. Knight was great. So, yeah, I liked it. Oh, and Mr. Knight is an actual suit. Like, that's an actual... He's wearing I clothes. I do know yes. that, actually. Yes. The the Moon Knight outfit was CGI, though, mm. which is lame. Although it does allow them to do the cool thing where he jumps and the cape turns into a crescent moon. Right, and it lets your whites be whiter. Yeah. But they still did a good job with an actual pe- outfit of clothing for the other Moon Knight. Yeah, and it was really cool looking. It had a lot of cool, like, details. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> yeah. The usual. Uh, if you want to email us, email us at comexplaining at gmail.com. If you want to get in touch with us over on social media, we are on Tumblr, Twitter, and Facebook. If you want to support the show, you can hit us up over on Patreon. Thanks to our one good and great patron, Robin. You can also donate to us over on Coffee. If you'd prefer to see a visual version of the podcast where you can see the different clips of stuff, Hit us up over on YouTube. Like, subscribe, and hit the bell button. America is from a universe called Utopia. Ha! Utopia. Uh, she was born on the Utopia Parallel. The Utopia Parallel. That's what it's called. Yes. I totally remember where I was in this. Uh, Sorry. Rate and review <laughs> us. And we're going to be back next week with the X-Men. I don't remember what the story is, so I can't tease it. Okay. <laughs> is Warren's dad still dead? Yes. yes. Um, Sorry if... The quality is not great. We're working out recording three people. Yeah. We're doing our best. Doing our best. Uh, we'd also like to notice the deaths of George Perez and Neil Adams. So I don't really know what to say about that. We're running very late. We'd just like to take a moment to pour one out on the street for Lost Homies. Two Ooh. comic book legends. Yep. Affected, All right. I know at least one of them affected my life without even me realizing it at the time. Mm-hmm. All right, let's wrap it up. Uh, We'll be back with you, and we look forward to talking to you next week. Bye. Bye. Bye.